This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back and thanks for joining us on the show today. This is the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens, and I'm here with my co-host, Andrew, the security guy. So, How's it going, brother? Very Good well. Good to be back. Good to be on the Cyber Underground. Oh, I've been a road warrior for how long now? Man, I'm, I'm getting up there. I think I'm going to make like whatever Delta, whatever <laughs> their thing is, man. <laughs> Diamond is there. Way up there. I don't know. I'm doing, doing, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm heading out again next week. So, God you know. status. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they have that. There's some guy. See you. Coming in the door. Oh, Mr. Lanning's on the way. There is these guys. There is this guy. His name's Ron. I forget his last name, but he is like the. He sits in seat A1. And there's this big joke on the Delta. There's a Delta page for Diamond people, and he's the Ron's the guy. You know? Yeah. yeah. So seat A, seat 1A. If you ever get that, that's Ron's seat because he's obviously not on your plane. So they make you move if he's on the plane. I don't know. I'm sorry, Ron. He might be like know. a 50 million mile or something. I have no idea. <laughs> that's I'm starting to feel that way, bro. I'll tell you, it's, it's been a lot of travel this I week. don't know how you train for your Ironman when you're on the road so Well, we'll see how if I'd been lousy in the race. Well, no, I didn't do well. <laughs> <laughs> your Ironman's coming up next year. Yeah, I got ways to go. Yeah, so. but you got know, some training. I'm tracking in. Man, uh, you're looking good, though. You're looking tight. I have a lot of miles? training to do. Hey, you must be tired now. Yeah. Yeah. I stay that way. <laughs> I live that way. Well, and you I also do another show. Let's mention your other show. You do this. Cool. Oh, we Where had a bocce shows? talk on Wednesdays, yeah. man. Think Tech's awesome. You guys get a lot of education out of Think Tech, don't you? Hey, Think Tech's great. I love Think Tech. We give. And, we and, give um, to the community. You should we, give back. Because our paychecks for like this us, show are very zeroed out. <laughs> There's no paychecks. No, zero. This is all community service, That's right? right. Yeah. So Today we're going to teach them about what? Well, crack. let's mention one other no, show. No, not crack. Let's one other show. There's a new one on here. Oh, um, awesome. It's um, Out and About with Winston Welch. Nice. Now, Winston, out Winston. He started up the Hawaii, or he's part of this uh, group that started up the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. Okay. They fight for LGBT rights. Uh, for in, business. In, for businesses. Equity across the business community. Like HR or like to, just to do business with us? Equal or? opportunity, doing business, contract, everything. They're like the F Filipino Chamber of Commerce, but... They support LGBTQ rights. And awesome. they were out at the uh, Hawaii Pride Festival last weekend. Awesome. And we had some people stopping by. Will Sparrow came by. Brian Schatz was there. Douglas Chin, the guy that uh, filed the motion to block the travel ban. Oh, the yeah. First yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was there. Wow. So I guess they're all running for office because we got the pictures. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, I mean, Hawaii's about you know, equality for everybody, right? So that's it's all right. good here. That's, yeah. that's one of the things you know, people may not... No, you know, if you're not from here, you don't spend time here, you don't really know, man. We, uh, we everybody. love everybody. It's all good. It's all they good. let me on this show. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that sign right there. <laughs> that's our EEO policy, right? <laughs> EEO. We let, we let Andrew on here. So. That's EEA. <laughs> equal, equal employment for Andrew. There you go. It's zero pay, by the way. But, you know. So, yeah, let's talk about crack. Um, our last episode was just uh, ad nauseum. We just did really in really? depth. Who was here? How? He, how? I didn't watch it. I'm so yeah. sorry. But that's okay. I, I mean, you know all about the key reinstallation attack crack and what, 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 did, it, what did they actually did you guys already talk about that if, they, yeah. if you did don't worry about it, it uh, we can give you quick but it's uh, pretty there, there were eight or nine uh, cert uh, CBTs issued I mean there's so there's apparently a, a lot of uh, vulnerability with, well, with let's talk about what thing. those are because I was going to bring okay. up the top the computer emergency readiness team yeah. in the United States CERT. called CERT they have CERT dot org you should go see them yeah. and they have all the knowledge base articles that will tell you about the the, the latest um, vulnerabilities yeah they get numbers the, CVNs right critical uh, vulnerability numbers so when they when these get issued the vulnerability that's been exposed comes sometimes results in more than one that you know and this this hack apparently there's many ways to many things you can do if you can do this this crack up. right everything right. from man in the middle to you know key yeah. interception and replacement attacks but um, cert also has a mailing list so you can get on the mailing list and they send you out these warnings two or three a day so you know when you have to do th something as simple as Adobe or Flash or your Firefox browser or something as complicated as, you know, Fortinet Firewall. Yeah, so you can be as paranoid as me. <laughs> yeah, we live in a dark everything's place. Broken. Yeah. <laughs> everything's <laughs> broken. Everything's <laughs> broken. So the yeah. key installation attack named Crack, uh, basically there's a, there's a handshake that goes on when um, a device authenticates to a wireless router, yep. right? And uh, during this process is a four-way handshake. And step three, uh, one of the uh, one of the keys gets sent across. Mm -hmm. And that's there's a sequence number in there, and there's a unique number of part of the encryption key. Mm -hmm. And all that can be intercepted and repeated 
So if I'm sitting in the middle, once you can I can grab that message and send out my own message, and the router's going to think I'm you. Yeah. So when the router responds, I not only know the encryption key, but it's responding to me. Mm -hmm. And if I want you back on the line, I'm going to pass that message on. But in the meantime, I see everything you're doing sure. back and forth. And so obviously, this has been around a while. So just no one uh, exploited Several it. months now. No, yeah. but I mean, it, we've been doing WPA for a long time. WPA2 has been out since 2004. So, so this yeah. has been yeah. broken since 2004. I hate to say it, but we, we should have seen this coming. Yeah. I, As well, security I professionals, And I don't already understand know. how in those handshakes and, and that intercept. So is, has someone developed a new technique for that interception? Or what? what I'm kind of wondering what brought this to light. No, it actually. Like we'd have known about this Forever. Right, we should have. And if if we read the paper that was, was put out, it was a brilliant paper. Got that. Um, I, I read the paper, which was you know, it's hard when you're not a scientist, but yeah. I got the gist of it. Um, this attack actually refers back to uh, the actual IEEE standard that came out to tell people how to implement WPA2. Right. And there's a gap mm. in the procedure that allows this to happen. I see. So if you implement it exactly according to spec, it's going to fail. There's a, there's a gap. But a couple of vendors, like Microsoft, said, no, we're going to go further. So you cannot do this on a lot of devices that Microsoft controls. So they actually had a little stop gap in there because someone was thinking ahead. And mm. there's a Did they, gap they, they identified it or were they just lucky? I think they were just lucky. Okay, I, I didn't on. see a, a statement from Microsoft, you know, we told you so. Come yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Come, they, you know, yeah. They might not say that anyway, but <laughs> this is this is a really, really bad because WPA2 is is kind of the default. I'd say it's what everyone uses everywhere for all their Wi-Fi stuff. Uh, everybody, it's the, so, you know, it's, it's been the top encryption protocol yeah. for... 14 years. So go go look for patches. There's a you can just Google crack crack updates, crack vulnerability page, whatever. Uh, I did that. There's a page here that's got probably a hundred vendors on here that make this stuff, and it tells you their status. So if they don't have a patch issued yet, it'll be coming soon. So right. you know, get your stuff updated and be careful if you're using wireless that's not patched right now. Yeah, run that patch immediately about when you get yeah. notified, iOS, Android, whatever. Uh, the good news is um, a lot of industrial stuff is Cisco. Cisco's a big player in the internet market, yeah. and they have already started blasting out patches. Okay. They're right on top of this. So is it automated? That, But you still probably got to go, no, go you, do it, right? You have it's, to do the patch. Yeah, it's a firmware update. Don't be and in Equifax, right? Then their page tells you you have to to configure some stuff. Oh. <clears throat> but it shows you on the command line, do these things. Okay. And and I, I look I'm very happy with Cisco that it did this. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean they're right on top of things. Good job, in Cisco. In North America they're a big leader. I mean Tails Group, you know, they're always out there in front air. They bought open DNS now, it's Umbrella, they're sharing all that information. I signed up for the a free account, free for sixty days. They've had me in there for six months, I ain't said a word. Still works like a champ. Caught, caught a little malicious redirect the other day somewhere I was trying to go that wasn't wasn't even real. I so like I Cisco, love Cisco for all the help that they give us. Their, their devices work forever, and they patch them forever. I've never seen a, a notification from Cisco saying, you know the device you bought in 2002 we no longer support? Oh, like Windows 95? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's 20-something years old now. We're done. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still going to have to cut that off. It's old. 95, it's 90, 95, man. That's yeah, so they, uh, ancient history. Stuff has to go away. Yeah, well, that's why I'm so surprised about WPA2. You know, when you go, you configure your router, you get a little drop-down. What protocol do you want to use? And the one that's most secure is WPA. And... That's it. Yeah. There's no more choices. Yeah. So we're gonna have to add one now. But in the meantime, WPA3 maybe. Yeah. So wow. Somebody will write one. Yeah. Hopefully. In mm -hmm. the meantime, though, you can use HTTPS on all your websites that you yeah, go yeah. to. I, you I can, have that HTTPS anywhere, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can in implement that in your browser. You can also use encrypted email. Yep. Um, and, encrypted, and you should anyway. You should anyway. We have a local vendor, Powbox. Yep. Does that P A U oh, voila. box? Yeah, they. Oh, Hawala? Hawala Greedy. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. We well, should get him on the show. Well, he's in San Francisco. He, when he's out here, you get him on the show. I bet he'd fly out for a He just vacation. came and gave a talk. He's been on a few shows. Not on our show, but he's been on a bunch of talk oh, a couple of times. Darn it. I missed him. Hawala's a good guy. Smart. We've got to get Brian Krebs on here, too. <laughs> okay, Skype him in. Uh, let's talk about uh, Brian Krebs. One thing I want to say, Eris, oh, right? So the one thing that I noticed that Eris hasn't said anything. So this, this site talks about all the affected stuff and gives the announcement for the manufacturer what they're doing when they're going to fix it. Eris is one of the heavily used modems from all these cable modem companies and they're all over Hawaii and they ain't said a word. So if you got Eris and you don't have another firewall in front of it, that's bad enough. But if you're running Eris, it looks like they're wide open without a plan to fix or a plan they're willing to share. 
that for consumers out there that might not know how that works, right? When when you're looking at your home network setup, you'd know the modem because there's a cable coming out of your wall, yeah. and the first thing it's going to go into is a cable, cable modem. modem. And, and they have like Wi-Fi built into it now, right? So a lot of people yeah. that's all they run and they're right, home. It's right. It, that's yeah. I wouldn't recommend that. Never. But out of that cable modem, you can branch off into your DVR. And you can branch off into your own wireless router, which I recommend, yeah. right? Uh, but your DVR is still wide open. Yeah, and, uh, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. And got, the DVRs got used in uh, the DDoS attack last October. Yeah. And refrigerators. DYN. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just, and webcams. It's shocked. Yeah, I had 60. <laughs> Dawa was in town, actually, in Kona last week. I talked to them a little bit about that. So they, yeah, uh, yeah they uh, got crushed. They really, it really hurt their reputation, their companies. They've been still battling that, you know, that note because they sixty thousand of their cameras were spread around the world. And Do you feel any sympathy for them though? The manufacturers me, have failed to implement you know, security. You know, I got to say this. I mean, and that, that could have been that it was ho installed by home installers and people. It could have been part of the process. So it's not always the device. In that case, there was a back door in there that was hard coded, right, initially yeah. in their old firmware. So in that case, no, I have no no sympathy for them whatsoever. But. Today, we've been talking about this for years with our devices, and so today, the manufacturing in our industry, we're we're coming down quite a bit harder. It, it just in, at least Andrew is. You know, I'm on my soapbox about cyber. I have been for a while for the electronic security industry, and um, yeah, there's no longer an excuse. I don't think Here so, especially sense. with ISO jumping on board now with the new rule set. Yeah, well, they're, they're UL's applying. You know, we've got ANSI now mm -hmm. for the UL guidance, and and we're going to. Uh, oh, uh, 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 ISO. So when we, you know, when we when we have that, you know, I mean, just getting ANSI is good enough. I mean, the manufacturer should be lining up, getting their self assured, uh, assured. You know, getting that extra level of assurance from a third party like UL. You know, they all say we use Veracode and da da da, da but that ain't been enough. So uh, all these all these acronyms are standards organizations within yeah. the world. Right. Right. And uh, ISO, International Standards Organization, is coming out with a whole new set of rules. Underwriters Laboratories, UL, is yep. coming out with a new rules that they can provide to hardware man manufacturers, and they recommend you implement that set of standards or rules to alleviate some of the crap that we've been seeing. And you mentioned one: hard coding passwords oh, back, in the firmware backdoor. Back so. If if I want to debug something before I release it to the public, I'll leave that back door in there because I want to, you know, if something locks up, I want to be able to log in. But when it's released to the public, that stuff ought to be taken out, Got to. and it's getting released. Sure. And that's and it's, folks. This isn't about just changing your hard drive. What happens is this is a little chip on the motherboard of a device that you have no access to. You can change your operating system. You can change out the hard drive. Does not matter. This is written into the firmware on your device and it's getting released and, yeah, and there's a lot of that out there of, and, it's, and it was it was initially thought of as a maintenance tactic right so that the manufacturer could get in that gear and do maintenance actions on it sure that was yeah. the thinking it's old world thinking because it's a bad idea because eventually someone figures out those passwords and hacks them and then your devices are wide open uh or sure dan publishes it or sure <laughs> you just send that well what is that device oh let me look that up yeah yeah that's uh, a, it's a it's a big problem and so and uh, UL has the 2900 series now. So and this isn't just electronic security devices. We're talking about industrial control devices, and we're talking about healthcare devices. So the 2900 series encompasses those three. There's mm -hmm. going to be a dash four for IoT devices. Yeah. So you know we're working on this because manufacturers just didn't seem to fix it of their own accord. So now we want some regulatory guidance, some certification, and, and until the consumers ask for that, I want that device to be certified 2900 series compliant. Um, you know, we're, manufacturers aren't going to push through there because it costs them money, right? And, and right, it's a business call on their part. They assume risk, but they still want to make a profit. Sure. And they, they, they have to do some bean counting. You know, how much is this going to cost me to implement it versus how much I want to profit? And truthfully, if, if I had to give recommendations to a company, I'd just, you know, say, maybe you ought to provide your CEO $1 million less this year in bonuses. And apply that to security. And yeah, and, and, and I mean, with the cost. And the chips, the chips are cheap, right? So they, they've got to run more expensive chips to be able to handle the certificates and the encryption levels that we're going to require in these devices. This so is a cost, yeah. Manufacturing up and down the board, the code's got to get better, yeah. the hardware's got to get better. And so when we've, the consumers have gotten so used to getting more and more features and benefits for less price every year, you know, the price of technology keeps the dropping, it's smarter and smarter and smarter. That's false because what we didn't get was any security. <laughs> Let's so take a break and we're yeah. going to pay some bills and we'll come right back awesome. and we'll pick that up because we're going to talk about industrial controls and healthcare devices, which are shockingly not secure. 
Okay, be right back in one minute. Stay safe. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Fastest minute ever. We're back. Uh, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Steens. We're here with Andrew, the security guy. Hey, Andrew. I'm, I'm just going over the fastest minute ever because we're all the same length. No, that was faster. <laughs> all right, they must make mis minutes different that in the was studio. Awesome. Yeah. Robert counts them down quickly. <laughs> nice. Well, we were talking about um, the hardware um, and the chipsets and the firmware and how this relates to insecure devices for industrial controls and healthcare. Mm. Let's tell our audience about what industrial controls are and what they do. Sure. PLCs, Programmable Logic Controllers. These are, they're, these are devices. They're really built um, to an industrial hardening level because the, the implement, the tools, the instruments is what they're called, actually out there that, that measure pumps and gauges and pressures and fluid flow are high voltage. And so we've got to have some sort of interface between high voltage devices, high voltage circuitry, and uh, digital circuitry. And so that PLC is that brick in the middle there that uses ladder logic or different types of programming to interpret that instrumentation signal into something and get converted to IP, send it down into the, the control room where you see it displayed as a pump running or a, a pressure on a, on, a, on, a, on a tank or whatever it may be. But they run really simple logic most of the time, yeah. It's yeah, that, that, that ladder logic is what I'm only familiar with the GE FANUC uh, programming stuff. I've, I've seen that ladder logic, how it works, and it's quite straightforward, you know. I mean, there's guys that, they, they build all the displays, you know. They have, you, you're running a, a fluid at some pressure through a, through a valve and it monitors, you actually build the device and it shows the pressure you can make it go round or up and down or you know how you want to how you want to display it, whatever makes sense you know for yourself but that you know that interpretation uh, was the important point we used to have to use um, uh, RTUs a lot of relay circuitry to do that with and you go to these rooms with huge you know relay cabinets all over the place to interpret all that to to bring that data in and segment it away from the uh, control display, you know. And now we have one little unit that, that does yeah, you got a little, yeah. yeah. And PLC. These things are hyper focused on their one task usually. Yeah. And there's not a lot of room for tons of code. They're very limited in the amount of memory mm -hmm. and storage space on them. So the code has to be super lean. So simple as is best, and that's the way people code these things. And sometimes they don't think about security. That's the, uh -huh. one of the biggest problems, right? Not only on the device, but the device that's reading from that device. Mm. And so if, if people say have, uh, let's just use an example you have a gate or a valve or something that's critical like a water system for a sewage treatment plant mm -hmm. if someone hacks your system they can remotely control whether or not you release water or don't release water or take on too much or don't mix the right chemicals in the, in the water mm. and this is a big issue you know if you hack these things you can do damage to our critical infrastructure yeah imagine you know people may not think about but one way to really shut a city down is to destroy the wastewater treatment facilities <laughs> Yeah. Imagine that. No toilets for a couple of months. Yeah, that would be bad. That's yeah. cholera, we that's about, disease, uh, that's a lot of problems. We, we had a, a discussion in one of my classes about what if we shut off the water? And a lot of people thought, oh, no big deal. And I said, oh, you shut off the, you shut off the electricity and the water in New York City. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, everything below ground level has pumps working 24-7 to keep the water out. Yeah. So instantly you flooded the whole... The you know, rail system and everything underneath, all the subways, yeah. everything's they, gone. They shut down in, what, two days and they're... 
and they're the, done. The city's just crushed. Just flooded. Every week. Yeah, and right. plus everyone in the high rise can't get water. Yeah, right. You, no you're, you're stuck. No There's no pumps. Um, the only thing that probably work is fire hydrants, but only barely. Yeah, right. So you can destroy a city with water. And so is it the actual? Because I mean, I know those, a lot of those devices talk talk SCADA to outbound. So, but the ones that are converting IP. So I was of the opinion that the hacks for these was actually on the IP side. That the, there's a weak, like Lantronics used to make a lot of these modules for devices, right? Mm -hmm. that, that were converting serial to IP data back, you know, been around a long time. And then a lot of it got embedded into the device itself. And I'm presuming that those are the same guys who made it, but a lot of the, uh, my understanding is a lot of that, that hackability of those devices because that, that IP interface was just not built with any real, you know, it's, there's no HTTPS in it, it can't handle a certificate or anything. Right, so, so it's no, just sitting there waiting no for instructions, it. and it really doesn't care who's yeah. giving the instructions. It's, so it's open HTTP. Someone so can walk in with a USB drive. You think this is safe well, because it's air-gapped, right, which means you're, you're yeah, it's not touching system, the internet. It's, it's not touching the internet, it's not touching your regular network, it's completely, uh, you know, it's like a closed-circuit TV mm -hmm. camera system. But you can walk in with a flash drive you found in the parking lot, Mm -hmm. and plug it in and really great program is at DEF CON this year we're demonstrating how they hack the drivers on a USB drive mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize when you put a USB stick into the computer it automatically your computer will reach out the operating system will reach out to that USB drive and say hey what driver do you want me to install for you to operate ouch and if someone's hacked that driver You've just given them permission to write to your something operating to system. Your, yeah, yeah. Something simple, just enough to get a back door open and let Ouch. someone channel in from the outside and Ouch. hit the remote. So you don't want to put in USB drive. There's no fix to this right away, yeah. by the way. None. Yeah. <laughs> you, can have this. you have to glue your USB drive shut. <laughs> yeah. You have to just glue, it, glue in there and make sure they don't work. Right. It's just turning them off doesn't do that. And you can shut them off, but the, the operating system is still going to see it's there and reach and out try for to, it. Try to query it. It's, it's built in. You know, Ouch. It's a convenience for the user, right? So those USB attacks are big. Let's talk about healthcare uh, devices now. Now, the latest one to get hacked, and this is the scariest this. one, the pacemaker. How's that? What happened? So I've been, you know, I was in the convention, so I, I'm not up on it. What happened to this pacemaker? So um, there's this a, was a live pacemaker, like in somebody's body? Yes. Ouch. Yeah, so what happened I'm was uh, no one died yet that we know about, but the pacemaker has a Wi Fi or Bluetooth uh, close range um, radio signal okay. to talk to, you know, human machine interface. So the doctor can read your irregularities in the heartbeat and wow. skips and, you know, to see if you're healthy or not. The old ones, you'd actually have to have a plug to plug into the person's chest. And, like and, a port. Yeah, like a Wang. port. You'd have to leave a port open or actually nice. cut them open. So this one was wireless. It's very convenient. But as we all know, the more times you build in convenience to, to customers, the less security you implement. So we're stuck with a pacemaker now that can not only be altered to give you the wrong data so the doctor doesn't realize there's a problem happening, but you can also deliver a shock that will interrupt the heartbeat. Nah. That lethal shock could potentially stop your heart. So researchers did this or someone got hacked? I do not want to reveal my sources. Oh. But it's out there. It's out wow. there. You can, you can look this up. <laughs> I, I definitely <laughs> saw that there was a report about it. I just didn't know what the, I didn't know the, the, the how, I didn't know if it was a, a you know, a lot of this, a lot of times researchers are, are find, finding these vulnerabilities and then other and, times, you know, the victim finds a vulnerability, right? So it's like, wow. Oh, no, yeah. They, they specifically said, the, the, the folks that I was quoting here, Nobody's died yet that they know of, which is a really good thing. I mean, uh, yeah. Are, they're, they're so if you have one of these kind of pacemakers, you want a patch. You should be. Oh, you can get a. You can get a patch. Here's the caveat. Okay. The patch could damage the pacemaker. Oh, that's not good. So there's a potential behind so you just the. Need push. To get, you need a new pacemaker. <laughs> you need to have your pacemaker replaced. Or just take some precautions so people can't wander around, you know, getting access to your pacemaker. Wow. I don't know how you do that. I guess wear uh, turn off the RFID wire. proof clothing. <laughs> Do you think wrap yourself in foil? Oh my God! The new Faraday jacket. Wow! <laughs> but healthcare in general, the devices are yeah. are not secure. Uh, another Same one problem. that they, they they research was um, there's devices that uh, will administer uh, the right dose of morphine or insulin or something when you're in your bed and the nurse isn't actively making rounds. They have a reduced staff, so they have these automated mechanisms. So okay. someone at the main nursing station can monitor how much insulin you're supposed to get at a certain time, okay. right? Well, again, if that's hacked, 
you can administer a lethal dose of in insulin. So what's the what's the connectivity to the console? It's it's Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi. And so you're using hospital Wi-Fi, right. which is using WPA2. Which is now crackable. And so is. Yeah. <laughs> There's just still no good news sometimes from this show. That WPA2 is really bad. <laughs> that is a bad that, one. That, that hurts a lot of us, and it's apparently difficult to fix because fixes aren't rolling out the door. It's been a week, right? Well, for healthcare, it's not just this. You know, I think that they've reduced staff to increase. Um, you know, profit profitability or at least make make a living mm. and unfortunately they, they reduce the amount of IT staff they've got on hand and the IT staff is stretched so thin that they have to implement so, so fast that they're not going behind and, and mm. securing the controls the way they should. We got to get somebody in here to talk about that. Steve Ross, somebody from the hospital and hospitals talk no, to us about that. No, that'd be great if they didn't incur too they, much liability. Yeah, like, see what they could, you know, what they, what can they tell us about what they're up to, you know, how, how they're working up to work on that problem. You know, I'm not, I know they're all about just sitting there. Yeah. You know, they're busy, right? So <laughs> they're I mean, these guys are busy, and that's why on their, their infrastructure. That's, that's why they, uh, they're, they're so, uh, I think, uh, abstracted from the problem is they're just so busy doing so many things. And yeah. sometimes you wear multiple hats. Sure. So you forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, it's working great. I got to move on. Yeah, that's the worst. What part. Does, um, did, has, has there been a report like from Krebs or anyone yet on that particular issue? He's the, he does healthcare, yeah. Healthcare. Yeah. Has, he, has he talked about the pacemaker yet? He or? hasn't talked about the pacemaker. That's okay, so seen. he's probably still researching. That guy's yeah. great. Yeah, when he gets something, we uh, so go to look up Brian Krebs, Krebs on security. Org, I yeah, believe. I think so. Yeah, and uh, he's probably the best security researcher out there. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, he's on everybody's crap list who's a bad guy. And we were talking <laughs> about this from the show. Somebody actually sent him a package of heroin to okay. his door and then called the police said, go look at this guy because he's got heroin. Because he's got heroin. Right. Yeah, right. But, but the hacker didn't know that Brian Krebs had already infiltrated his, his drug ring on the dark web. Oh, uh, and so he knew the package was coming? He knew it was coming. That's awesome. <laughs> Brian's, Brian's that good. I love oh, good it. Good for you, man. Brian, yeah. we got to get you on the show. Buddy. I think um, <laughs> I was thinking that maybe the, uh, the Insights guys might be helping him out. Tom, Tom, and his crew. Oh, some of that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's their kind of homework. That's right? the, see, they do the deep uh, dark intelligence in the dark web, yeah. and, they, and they they use artificial intelligence to reason all that stuff yeah. out. And they impersonate people on the web too. Yeah, and see, so you never know. So you can see who's building hacks against you, and they would they would probably help someone like Brian. I'm uh, sure. Like, hey Brian, imagine. we found this. This clown's coming at you. Highly his. valuable to Brian, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Give him a little bit more free time. Yeah, the guy's busy. <laughs> he could do some more research. you got to outsource that, Brian, <laughs> to insights. Let's talk about, uh, like, really hard things to, to overcome. Uh, well, let's talk about access cards. Now, this is something you do a lot, mm. right? Oh, you can use you a, need proximity cards. You can use proximity card or the old school swipe Right? Mag stripe. They can all be copied. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, and the RFID cards where you just walk up to the reader and, and beep it, that can be read and duplicated and, from three feet away. And replayed. Sure. Right? And, and that's a danger. And also this, the signal going, the wagon is not encrypted, so the signal on the wire. So, you know, even if I can't get it from the card, I can just put a little device on the wire that broadcasts it to... Uh, via USB, and you can put it like on your phone, and then like when you go put your card to the reader and go in, I can come right behind you and play it from my phone to the reader. Those lets me right in. So easy fix though, uh, when you're not yet at work, put that RFID card maybe in an RFID proof wallet. So um, yeah. you're away well, from use use one that's got some encryption on. I mean, so we have some higher level cards. We're right. talking about 125k prox here. That's very very simple to hack. 125k. Right? Yeah. So the 13.56 can carry more circuitry. That's it, it can carry yeah. a, a certificate. You can you can have encryption from the card to the reader. So those those you, you could copy, but you can't read it. So so good fix, low budget, high budget, and yeah. we're out of time. Spend the money for a good card. Can you believe it? we're out of time already? That fast? Uh, it just uh, flies by. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, aloha from the Cyber Underground. Uh, come back next week, and we're going to be doing some more great stuff and talking to some more great people. Until then, stay safe.